This is a screencast on using a simple grid system. It's going to be a series of three screencasts that will go through sort of how and why to implement a system, a grid system with HTML and CSS. And this whole sort of system that you're going to be seeing is was inspired by an article on the web designer wall by Nick Law, uh, talking about originally the 960 grid system and that it was getting a little old and offering a sort of simpler way to do that. Uh, and you can find it at the link below there. So the first part we're going to look at is, you know, sort of what are grids and, and, and why use them? And why why do we want to why do we want to use grids? Well, they give structure to a page. So they help in making some decisions about the page. And also in terms of what they are, really it's just a series of columns as you see here and gutters so gutters are the spaces in between the columns that make sure things don't run up right next to each other and possibly also rows now in the simple system we're going to be using uh, the concept of rows that we have will be a little more simple and we're not going to have a sort of baseline grid like the one used here where everything is aligned exactly to a baseline grid that goes horizontally. We're going to be focusing on in these this series on these vertical columns here and making all content fit in the widths there. And this website by the way the grid system that this uh, picture is of gives a lot of uh, also other information you can get about grids as well. So here's some more examples of some grid based websites. And as you can kind of see from some of this, there really are a lot of different ways a grid plays out. So you get some that are very sort of uh, regular, and it's very much based on the, the same size on most of the items. You can then take that and start to expand and make certain items bigger, right? So taking over two or three squares uh, that you have here, or this example over there and you can also kind of break out of it so you can have some things that that really go directly on the grid and then you can have other items that kind of pull off of that and come out so and they're useful obviously from everything from personal uh, portfolio sites blogs to the New York Times here right which uses a grid to lay out all this complex information so they can be useful in much more, more than just uh, one single situation. <clears throat> one of the biggest questions uh, that structure helps to answer is how wide should this element be? So when we have a grid, then when we're trying to decide how wide something should be, so here we might say, well, we know we want to have a, a longer picture and a shorter one, but the question is, how wide are each of those things? Well, when we have a grid system, the answer is clear. We might say, okay, the first one takes up, you know, so many co columns, five columns. The other one takes up two columns or three columns. And we know right now that two columns on this grid is 150, and five columns is 470 pixels wide. So you know right away exactly how wide to make things and it also helps space them out as well. So in the end grids can be easier. Often there's a learning curve when you're starting out working with grids that you have to work with to learn how to work with them a little bit and that's partly what this screencast is about. But in the end it makes some of your decisions, design decisions and also HTML CSS decisions and questions easier to answer. One of the problems with using a grid, though, in web design is that implementing it with HTML and CSS can be confusing. So the question is, how can you implement a grid without too much headache? Nothing's going to be blindly simple, um, especially in this case, since we want to be able to create our own custom grid from scratch and not use someone else's. But it can be relatively simple. So one, one solution is to use someone else's system. Uh, these are two largely used systems across the web and they come with a bunch of CSS that you can use to implement your grid. So you basically use their grid style sheets, learn how the system works, and then implement it in your design. 
sometimes a nice thing about using these, especially across an organization, is that you get people using all the same system and it's easy for someone to switch from one project to another. The problems can be sometimes that they can be more restrictive because they don't have as much flexibility to change widths and things like that. In fact, the 960 system is based on a, on a set width. So the other solution then is to, to make your own grid. And if you're going to go down that route, then basically what we're going to have to do is figure out, well, what are your settings going to be? How wide is it going to be? How many columns are you going to have? How wide is each column? How wide is the gutter in between those columns? And then you'll have to write a CSS that defines all those characteristics. And, of course, uh, write your HTML and apply that CSS to it. Uh, which this step sort of happens regardless of which which solution you're using your own system or or someone else's. And again, this is the link. These these images are from the Nicola Web Designer Wall article I mentioned earlier. Before we go on, the next section is going to be about the basic ideas uh, that you'll need to know in order to create the system. This ends part one.